Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkter. Today I'm just going to talk about how to navigate through FL Studio and what each of these buttons on our panel mean. How to interpret what all these settings are, how to manipulate them, and how to begin automation and recording. Alright, the most important thing to know if you're a beginner user to FL Studio is that this gray box right here be below our file menu this will describe whatever action our mouse pointer is currently above and if it's not an action it will just it'll explain what the um, light or what the indicator represents so um, our file menu contains our basic file options our options menu will deal with audio settings and uh, the basics of just MIDI options. We also have some duplicate switches here which are the same as our recording panel switches right here. And I'll explain what these mean. There are five basic components to the FL Studio setup. Um, for a reason user, you, you should be familiar with four components. Those being the front of the rack, the back of the rack, the the piano roll sequencer and the group or um, region sequencer and um, I think pretty much the same is true for GarageBand and all the others so the rack is just a condensed version of all your instruments where you can manipulate them that is represented by our channels and these are broken up into separate windows one is always your plug-in window where you have the options that are specific to this particular instrument which would be like how you know how tuned it is how much treble it produces and so on. You have a set of options that are more generic. These deal with whether or not um, portamento is involved, how many voices you can have maximum, and also the generic options of panning to, to the left and right ears and our volume. I notice when I, again, when I put my mouse over each of these options, it, dis it displays in the top left corner text which describes what this is all about. Now, um, aside from the channels menu, we also have a playlist menu where we combine our various patterns together to make a song. Now this is where FL Studio differs from Reason, GarageBand, and some of the other uh, digital audio workstations. The pattern-based sequencing, um, some people can understand it, some people just don't care for it or whatever, but it's really not too difficult to to translate this from a reason perspective. Let me show you. This is what pattern one looks like. You can think of it as a single sequencer track in a reason template. Now I've actually got almost my entire song right here in a sequencer track, right? Just just like you'd expect to see in a program like Reason or you know GarageBand or whatever. Although uh, GarageBand does break things up into convenient regions and Reason will break things up into little groups that you can copy and manipulate. Um, so it's really not too difficult um, to understand the difference is that in in FL Studio each pattern um, how do I say each new pattern is going to occupy a different vertical space so that you can clearly see which ones are playing and which ones aren't and which ones uh, which version of a certain pattern you're playing. Okay. So um, the channel menu is where we can inspect and deal with our particular patterns and the playlist is where we assemble those patterns. Okay, now uh, I'll talk about some of the others before we go on. The piano roll is something you'll find in again almost every digital audio workstation and it represents notes over time and just like every almost every other workstation uh, you have a segment at the bottom which represents velocity. These are your basic MIDI options here. Now the piano roll is also used for automation. You can edit um, different characteristics. For example, the uh, channel volume. We can give it um, sort of a, an oscillation, or we can even use a, um, a built-in LFO to come up with all kinds of uh, various shapes and patterns, whatever it is that we want to achieve. It's nice, you, you can actually see what it's going to look like in real time and make, make changes based on that. So. Um, that's a bit extreme and I don't want that but nonetheless there you are so um, that's the piano roll the browser 
is the fourth option on this little toolbar. And this is where we can browse for different sound effects, loops, uh, some of the presets we'll find, whatever you've got that you want to use. Okay. And once once you have a once you have a piece that you want to use in some fashion or another, uh, let's just take a sound effect of a dog. Barking, for example. I can either drag that directly to my playlist, where it becomes a one-off, a one-off audio clip, although I can actually repeat it if I want to, or I can drag it to my channels, where it becomes a sampler. And with the sampler, you can do some options. Change the pitch. Just generally um, muck it up in any, in any way, shape, or form. Now the channels menu is actually subdivided into categories to help you uh, distinguish between different elements. You, you might you might label these as like synth or drums or FX to keep them orderly. That's optional. The mixer right here. Um, if you're from a Reason background, you might you might notice that you um, well you've only got one mixer. In Reason, you can create as many mixers on top of mixers, and they all have to eventually condense into two stereo tracks, but in FL Studio, you've got 64 channels. Now, if that isn't enough for you, um, I don't know. You've got some problems with your with your composition, I think. 64 channels is a lot of channels. You'll run out of CPU before you fill all these up, I promise. So, um, the mixer, all the same knobs are available. Um, panning left to right, our volume for this particular insert. On the right side, we can throw effects onto these individual tracks, such as an e equalizer, something like that, whatever you want to do. Filters, uh, reverbs, all kinds of different effects, distortion, whatever you're looking for, you can pretty much find it in FL Studio or as part of an external VST plugin. You also have a built-in one-band parametric EQ with two shelves. So every, tr every mixer or track has a built-in equalizer. Um, it's a very basic one, but it should be enough to sort of shape your sound into the general um, frequency spectrum that you're looking for. To navigate easily between these is um, probably best accomplished by using these uh, the shortcut panel up above. There are some other shortcuts here that I'll show you to sort of accelerate your, your, your process here. Um, if you're in the channels menu, and you want to get into a piano roll for something that doesn't already have one, you right click on the channel and choose piano roll. And that will choose the piano roll for that particular instrument. If you have a pattern that you like, you enjoy working with, you can clone that pattern by right clicking this pattern in the playlist. And now we have an exact copy of it. So we can make a small, a small adjustment to this pattern, for example, to sort of a humanize our, our loop or get some variety out of it, for example. To make an automation, simply choose the knob that you want to automate and click Edit Events. That's a right click and then choose Edit Events. Here you're free to draw any shape. Um, right clicking will give you a straight line tool or you can use the LFO tool to generate a, a um, calculated um, rhythmic pattern based on these seven or eight parameters. Now if you don't like what you've done, this is the erase button. And you can always take it back. Now if you don't have any any data in this pattern, it won't affect the volume multiplier, but just setting it setting it to the bottom is not a good idea. That means it's going to actually turn the knob all the way to zero. That's not what we want. We want the volume to either be somewhat mid-range or we want it to simply not be affected by this pattern. So I'm just going to erase everything. Uh, one thing about the channels, they are a fixed length, but you can adjust that right here. And that's going to determine whether or not your patterns will fit into the, the realm or the, uh, the scope that you're given. Now, uh, this particular pattern is, is four beats long, but I can set this to eight, and you'll see that it stretches out the pattern. Okay, um, a quick word about... Um, well, let me see how much time I have. Nope, sorry. Um, I've only been able to explain the basics. Stay tuned for part two coming out soon.